Hello and welcome to a new video on wet specimens. In this episode, we'll be primarily taking a look at the various types of containers recommended for storing wet specimens. I'll also discuss briefly about the containers that are not recommended for long-term specimen storage and the reasons behind why they fail to be effective containers for the same. First off, my personal favorite when it comes to the container of choice for wet specimens is what is commonly known as the fish tank. Traditional aquarium tanks are usually made of ordinary window pane glass sheets cut to the required size and then bonded together with a special type of adhesive called silicone sealant. Silicone is a fairly chemical resistant material and if applied properly along the edges of the glass sheets results in a fairly durable, watertight receptacle for storing specimens. I usually make a small cut on one corner of the lid, like you see here, to serve both as preservative refill and drainage port and also as a kind of air vent to minimize pressure buildup inside the tank. I pluck this hole tightly with a ball of absorbent cotton. If a specimen is intended for permanent storage and or display, I usually seal the glass cover with silicone. Alternatively, taping the glass cover with good quality transparent cellophane tape alone also suffices. I've personally had great success using fish tanks for storing formalin preserved specimens although I cannot vouch for their efficacy in storing alcohol-preserved specimens. I mostly, if not exclusively, work with formalin as a preservative, so it would be great to hear stories from people who have had some experience, hopefully positive experiences, using fish tanks for alcohol-preserved specimens. Two advantages that clearly stand out based on my experience with fish tanks is that 1. Anybody with a glass cutter, a tube of silicone glue, and some glass sheets can make a DIY fish tank. And two, size doesn't matter with this type of container, unlike many other commercial specimen jars, because one can always make a fish tank of any size depending upon how big or small the specimen is. As you can see here, I've custom made and used fish tanks for all sizes. The size of the tank for this newborn calf, for instance, is approximately 70 centimeters in length by 15 centimeters width by 50 centimeters height. For curious viewers, you can click on the link given in the top right corner of the screen to watch my video on how I preserved the calf specimen. Even the museum in my home state uses silicone sealed tanks for storing their natural history wet specimens, many of which are more or less half a century old, but still in great shape. Some of my oldest fish tanks were made by me about five to six years ago and are still holding up. So these types of containers could very well become a viable and cheap alternative to costly museum-grade specimen jars sold commercially, which now brings us to the second type of container recommended for wet specimens. Museum jars are specially designed for long-term storage of valuable wet specimens. Rectangular museum jars, like the ones shown here, are the most commonly used for specimen storage, High-quality rectangular jars are usually made from chemically and thermally stable borosilicate glass, although more inferior quality glass made from soda glass and plexiglass or acrylic sheets are also widely used. Shown here is an example of a rectangular jar made from acrylic sheets. Rectangular jars come in a handful of standard sizes, two of which are shown here. The dimension of the bigger jar is 25 cm length by 14 cm width by 25 cm height dimension, while the smaller one is 14 cm by 14 cm by 22 cm. Slightly taller or wider variants are also available. The glass lid usually have frosted edges for a tight seal. Some lids are also designed with a tiny hole to facilitate refill and drainage of the preservative fluid. Cylindrical museum jars usually have a kettle lid with a knob type handle on top. They also come in different sizes, two of which are shown here. 
the dimensions of the larger one being 20 cm diameter by 20 cm height and the smaller one a 15 by 15 cm size. Slightly larger and smaller jars are also available. Cylindrical museum jars are great for storing and displaying specimens that have a overall bulky or rounded shape such as brain and other organ specimens. Even snakes preserved in a coiled posture pair well with cylindrical jars. Two of the major drawbacks of museum jars is their high cost and size limitation. The price of a single museum jar made from borosilicate glass can range anywhere from about $100 all the way to over $400 or $500, depending primarily on the size of the jar. The largest commercial standard size of a rectangular museum jar that I'm aware of is not more than 36 cm tall, and that of a cylindrical jar is 30 by 30 cm diameter and height. So any specimen larger than these sizes will need something else to store them in. Rectangular jars made from plexiglass are also prone to scratches over time, which compromises with the transparency of the jar, which is essential for proper specimen viewing. The next kind of container very commonly used for wet specimens is what is known technically as the gas jar. Easily recognized by its signature tall cylindrical form, the gas jar was originally designed and intended for use in chemistry to collect and analyze gases prepared in the laboratory by a technique called the downward displacement of water, and hence the name. Gas jars and their modified forms come in various sizes and have long been used as popular wet specimen storage receptacles. The original design of a typical gas jar looks something like this. When used as a specimen jar, the lid, which is either a square or a circular piece of glass, is glued in place with a durable adhesive. Shellac varnish is most commonly used to seal the lid in commercially sold specimens in my country, India, although I have also seen numerous photos of antique museum specimens stored in gas jars where the lid is sealed with some form of a black tar-like material whose composition I'm not entirely sure of. Personally, I prefer silicone sealant to seal the lid. There are also specimen jars based on the design of a gas jar, where the cover is a more sophisticated kettle lid type design, with tight-fitting ground glass joint and a knob handle like the one shown here. Most of the 19th and 20th century natural history collections, including those of the great Charles Darwin, are stored in these types of cylindrical jars. Gas jars are mostly made of glass, either borosilicate or soda glass, although plastic variants are also commercially available. These are made of clear, transparent polycarbonate material, to be more precise. Polycarbonate gas jars are however extremely prone to cracks and scratches, which hugely compromises with the viewing clarity of the specimen and also results in leakage of the fluid inside. Another type of specimen jar which is equally popular is what is known as the Bakelite jar, getting its name from the fact that the screw cap is made from a plastic material called Bakelite. Bakelite jars are also cylindrical in form just like gas jars and also come in varying sizes. Bakelite jars are usually made of glass, either borosilicate or soda glass. The main problem with Bakelite jars is that the screw cap is quite prone to cracking and breakage, especially when the cap is opened and closed on a regular basis for the purpose of specimen inspection or other reasons. White mouth glass reagent bottles with tight-fitting ground glass toppers like the ones shown here are also commonly used as wet specimen storage containers. These types of containers with ground glass toppers are also more commonly known in certain parts of the world as apothecary jars. They come in various sizes, from as small as 60 ml to as large as 2000 ml bottles. The ones shown here are 60 ml, 100 ml and 250 ml capacities. This particular bottle here is technically a weighing bottle with ground glass stopper designed for weighing substances in a weighing scale. However, it can also effectively serve the purpose of a specimen container. The bottom line is that any type of bottle with good quality, tight-fitting ground glass stopper is a great choice for storing wet specimens in.
Pathology containers are another ideal choice for storing wet specimens. These two are 50 ml and 100 ml specimen containers, more commonly known as urine cups, that we commonly come across in hospitals and path labs. The screw caps are fairly air and water tight and can be used to store wet specimens of the smaller sizes for a considerable length of time. This larger 500 capacity container here is originally designed to be used for storing tissue and organ specimens for pathology. It has a tight fitting screw cap and comes in different sizes. Larger and smaller volumes are also available. Here's another example of a recommended specimen container. These are technically known as culture tubes and are specially designed for use in microbiology and plant tissue culture experiments. Culture tubes are basically test tubes with a tight-fitting screw cap usually made of bakelite, just as in the bakelite jars that we've previously discussed. The screw cap has an inner rubber lining to ensure a air and water tight seal. These are 15, 30, and 60 ml tubes. Even smaller ones are also available commercially. Culture tubes are ideal for storing smaller specimens. Some other related examples of containers are these plastic screw capped vials and these glass vials with plastic stoppers. These tiny tubes are commonly used in biology for storing small biological samples. Certain kitchen containers can also do a great job at preserving a wet specimen for a long period of time, if not indefinitely. Here's an assortment of some kitchen containers that I recommend and that we are all familiar with. These are honey jars of different sizes with tight-fitting plastic screw caps with an inner lining made of thick paper. To ensure an even tighter fit, you can add a couple of layers of polythene on the mouth and screw the lid in place. This familiar-looking clip-type jar with a gasket made of silicone is in fact used in some museums and institutes as wet specimen containers. The silicone gasket combined with the metal ring clip ensures a very tight seal, and specimens can be stored for decades without the risk of evaporation and preservative fluid loss. Pop jars like the ones shown here also come in different sizes and work as effectively as clip jars for long-term specimen storage, providing a air and water tight seal. Now coming to the list of containers not recommended for long-term storage of specimens. Here is an assortment of glass infusion bottles and injection vials with rubber corks commonly encountered in a hospital setting. These types of containers are okay for short-term storage of wets. The problem is that the rubber stoppers harden and shrink over time and eventually no longer ensures a tight fit, resulting in rapid evaporation of the preservative fluid. Specimens can be stored for a couple of years, within or after which it would be best to find an alternative container from among the recommended list. I've also seen many oddity hobbyists and artists use rubber or wooden corks to pluck their specimen containers. The problem with wooden corks is that they have a breathable structure that facilitates the evaporation of the preservative fluid through them. If you absolutely need to use especially wooden corks for any reason, aesthetic or otherwise, then I highly recommend first dipping the entire cork into molten paraffin wax and allowing it to solidify before you plug it in. This will ensure a tight fit while also preventing preservative fluid loss over time. Having said that, Containers with cork stoppers are still no substitute for the previously discussed standard recommended containers when it comes to long-term permanent storage. The next type of containers that might work only for short-term specimen storage are those with metal lids such as pickle and jam jars. Preservative fluids, even ordinary water for that matter, have a detrimental effect on metals. What happens is that as time progresses, the preservative will eventually corrode the inner surface of the metal lid, while the outside air will do the same on the outer surface of the lid. This two-way corrosion results in the eventual disintegration of the metal lid altogether. In addition, the rust that forms on the inside of the lid will sprinkle itself into the preservative fluid every time the container is moved or agitated. This could potentially destroy your precious specimens over time. To sum up this video tutorial, any container that is considered ideal for preserving and storing wet specimens is one that is made of good quality, chemical resistant material, preferably glass, and that has a tight fitting good quality lid that is also resistant to corrosion or other forms of disintegration. 
So this is all about the choice of containers for wet specimens. Do let me know of any crucial points that I might have probably missed or any additional questions and inputs that you might have relating to wet specimens. Drop a comment below and I'll make sure to come back with a reply. Also do show your support for what I'm doing by considering subscribing to my channel and turning on notifications. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.